These are the Orca FPV-1 pilot goggles. So pretty much the second version of the Orcas. I don't really know why they didn't just call it the V2s. Anyways, I'm someone that uses DJI on almost all of my drones, but these are making me fall back in love with analog FPV. <laughs> So here's a quick uh, size comparison between the FPV-1 Pilot goggles from Orca and the DJI V2 goggles. They're significantly smaller. Um, I get a better fit with the Orcas on my face. I don't get any light leaks, whereas with these, I do get a little bit of light leak kind of down in the corner around here. I don't know if these just sit tighter against my face, but I get no light leak with the Orcas. So off the bat, let's just talk about what comes with the goggles and what doesn't. In the box, you'll receive the goggles, you get this carrying case, you get this head strap, you get two different types of face foam. So the one that I use is this leathery kind of one, and then you also get one that's neoprene. So a couple of other things that came with the version that I got was this additional patch antenna, as well as the FPV connect module that sits in this bay on the side. The connect module is usually $60 and this patch antenna you can get for 15. I'll talk about the connect module in a little bit, but usually these two components come separate from the goggles. The goggles alone I'm seeing retail for $570, but on Banggood right now you can get this kit that I got with the connect module and this patch antenna for $499, I think. Right now it's mid-August and I'm not really sure how long that sale is gonna go on, but as of right now, you can get this for $500 and that's the cheapest that I've been able to find them. Okay, so now onto the things that the goggles don't come with that you'll have to just buy separately. These goggles unfortunately don't come with an internal module, so you'll need to buy a VRX or a video receiver module that fits in this side bay right here. I have a rapid fire module in the side of mine, but you could also use something like a TBS Fusion or a Foxier um, Wildfire module. I'm not sure how those two would fit in this. This little cover is made for the rapid fire, but regardless, you'll need to get a video receiver module that fits in this bay. You'll also obviously need some antennas for whatever module you put on here. You're also gonna need to get a battery. The goggles have a barrel jack on the side right over here for the voltage input, and it supports six to 25 volts. Um, this is the same size barrel jack that's on DJI goggles and Fat Shark goggles and a lot of different FPV goggles you can get. I typically actually use this Fat Shark um, 18650 battery case. This has the barrel connector that connects to the goggles and the strap that's on here has a little loop right here so you can fit the battery right on the side and then it just connects into the side of the goggles. Another way that you can power these goggles if you don't have a battery like this is you can take pretty much any 2 to 6S uh, LiPo and you can get a little adapter for XT60 like this. I'm pretty sure DJI sells one and I know Skyzone has one, um, but this barrel connector will connect to the goggles and then you connect this to the LiPo and you can power your goggles. I prefer to use something like this just because it keeps it nice and clean on the side of the head strap and you don't have wires everywhere. Now let's just take a look at the goggles themselves. Actually, let me get the strap off of here so it's out of the way. The strap comes off pretty easily. It's just held on with Velcro and it just kind of slides through there. So looking at these goggles from a design perspective, I love the polygonal, I guess you could call it, design to these. Um, I think it looks wicked cool. Yeah, I say wicked, I'm from Boston, whatever dude. On the top of the goggles, we have quite a few buttons and most of them are very flush up against the goggles. There are two scroll buttons that are pretty easy to find, but the other six buttons can actually be pretty difficult to locate if you're not looking at the top of the goggles because it's so flush. So when you have these on your head and you're kind of, you're looking for the DVR button, it's kind of tough to find it just because it's so flush against the top. So this is the power button right here. And then this button right on the other side controls the fan. Personally, I prefer the fan to just always be on, but this button will uh, turn it on and off. These two buttons over on this side, on the side of the uh, rapid fire module will actually control the channel. So then you don't have to use this little uh, jog wheel to change channels and stuff. You can literally just use these two buttons. I have mine set up to use this joystick instead of this joystick. In the menu, I'll go over the menu in a little bit, but in the menu you can uh, configure which joystick you would prefer to use. I use this one. On the other side we have these two buttons right here and this one with a red circle on it is the DVR record button and then the other one is basically just a back button for when you're scrolling through the menus. 
Also on top of the goggles, this isn't a button or anything, but this is a little port that makes these goggles future-proof. Orca is working on their own digital FPV system that'll compete against DJI and WalkSnail. Um, I haven't really heard anything regarding this system recently, so I'm not sure what stage they're really at with releasing it, but once that comes out, you'll basically be able to plug some type of digital module into this bay. This little cover just kind of slides out like this. I don't really know what's in there, um, but once they come out with their digital module, you'll be able to take this thing out, plug it in here, and then you have digital FPV goggles. So on the left side of the goggles, I already mentioned this, but here we have the analog video receiver bay, and this is where you'll put your uh, rapid fire module, or your video receiver. And in here you have a port for headphones, and you also have a port for a microphone. On the opposite side here, we have another bay, and this is where the FPV Connect module will sit. So like I mentioned, this isn't something that's usually included with the goggles, and it's a $60 add-on. Basically what this module does is it connects with your phone and using the Orca app, you can connect to your goggles to view DVR footage, install updates, and you can even live stream from this module. Leave a comment down below if you think I should do a live stream long range FPV flight with this. Also on this side next to this bay, you have the power input uh, jack that I already mentioned and underneath that you have an AV in and then you have an HDMI out. Finally, on this side, you have the foam that goes around everything that goes against your face, and then you have the adjusters on the bottom that adjust the eyepieces right here. Up above this eyepiece is where they put the micro SD card slot. So this is the micro SD card that is gonna um, record DVR footage. The DVR footage that this records is 1280 by 960 and is 60 FPS. So the DVR can produce a pretty high res image depending on the camera that you have on your drone. The eyepieces are fully adjustable and have an IPD adjustment of 56 to 74 millimeters and an adjustable focal length of four to negative four diopters. I think most people will be able to use these goggles without glasses, but if you do need contact lenses or glasses with these goggles, there is a little slot in front of the lens where you can put those. The field of view on these goggles um, has been a little controversial from what I've read online. I personally like it, I don't mind it. It has a 37 degree field of view. Usually like with Fat Shark HDOs, you'd have, I think it's 46 degrees. So a little bit bigger uh, field of view on those, but this one's 37. So it's gonna feel like there's a smaller screen in there, but the screens that are in here are really nice. There's basically two half inch Sony OLED screens. So the image on these is incredibly clear. It'll be a little difficult to show you guys what the screens look like on this, but I'm gonna try. I feel like these just might be the kind of goggles that you gotta actually just put them on in order to appreciate how clean of an image it is. Comparing this to DJI, the DJI screen looks bigger, but the Orca screens look better image-wise. With these Orcas, you'll see that it's kind of like looking down a tube at the screens. All right, let's plug a battery in and we'll briefly go through the menu on these. The menu layout on this is easily one of the best that I've ever used on an FPV headset. All right, so I was originally gonna use my iPhone to film this, but my phone died, so now I'm using this GoPro. So hopefully you guys can see this. Actually, it might be better than the iPhone. Off the bat, you can actually see that tunnel effect that I mentioned. So it kind of looks like you're looking down a tube at the screens. I don't mind it. When your eyes are right up against it, it's not that bad, but some people might mind. Um, to access the menu, you click this button on your goggles. It might be here. I, can, I have mine configured to just be this button. The initial screen that you see, uh, just these general settings, these are basically just the general goggle settings. So you can control the image quality, um, you can control the input source, stuff like that. I think the most useful setting on this menu would be the deep focus. So it basically just displays this image right here. It's a high quality image. Um, and you basically would just adjust these little focal rings down the bottom to get that image in focus as best as you can. And then they also have a quick focus underneath that. That's just that image. So next to this, they have about, and this is just gonna tell you about your goggles, what firmware you're running, stuff like that. If you go to the very bottom, there's a little extras tab, or Easter eggs, I guess we could call it. And this is just games you can play. So we have Tetris, Pac-Man, and uh, Snake. So you can play these when you're not flying FPV. Next to about, we have GoPro. So these goggles can actually connect to a GoPro. So if you use naked GoPros quite a bit, like I do, you can connect a GoPro to the goggles and you can change your GoPro's settings all through here. 
Um, I don't have a GoPro synced up to this yet. This might be another video that I make because I think this is a pretty cool feature. But if you have different profiles loaded on your GoPro, you can configure it all through your goggles. Next to GoPro, we have connectivity, and this is where you'll configure all the FPV uh, connect module settings, or if you're using Ghost, you can configure that through here. Next to that, we have playback. So this is obviously where you're gonna be able to view your flight footage if you want. And next to that, we have DVR settings. So this is when you're recording video, you can configure the volume and all that stuff. And next to this, we have features, and I think Actually, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but this uh, headset has a built-in head tracker. So through this setting, you can actually configure it so that if you start tilting your head too far forward or too far back, um, you'll get a little alert on here telling you that you're tilting your head beyond a certain degree, I guess. Um, I don't use it, but it is kind of a cool feature that they have. So you'd configure that through this menu. And then next to this, we have RX. So this basically just connects to the video receiver module that you have in the side. And something cool that I like about this is you can go through here and you select whatever module you have. I have a rapid fire. And then when you go down to this, you can actually see each channel and see what video is on it. So if you're flying with a bunch of people, you can go right through this and you can see what each channel is looking like. And you can change the channels pretty quick. It's a lot quicker than using the little jog wheel on the side uh, on the rapid fire. So yeah, that's pretty much the settings menu for these goggles. So that's my review on the Orca FPV-1 Pilot goggles. They're expensive, but these things are nice. If you're looking for one of the highest quality analog goggles that'll be future-proof and capable of digital FPV, I would definitely consider these. They're expensive, like I said, but I really do think you get what you pay for. Um, the menu that's built into these is easily the best menu that I've used on an FPV goggle. Uh, the goggles communicate with your phone, it communicates with your GoPro, you can live stream from it, you can play games, you can access flight footage. Plus it has the port up top, which will be used for Orca's digital FPV system. Um, there, there's a lot built into these goggles. It's, they're, they're really nice. They are expensive, but they're really nice. Um, so if you have the extra money and you're looking for a good set, look into these. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and if you have any questions about these goggles, leave a comment down below.